I did a promo a while back, December 2018 to be exact, and let's go over the lighting. The edge light here was a Hive Plasma PAR. It's equivalent to a 575 HMI. I had it going through a 4x4 of diffusion. I believe it was half soft frost. This is providing the edge light. I just wanted to soften it a little bit. Even with the diffusion, it was still too strong, so I went with a double scrim and a single as well, just to knock it down. In the front here, you'll see that we did a book light. It was a Joker 800 HMI. HMI bounced into a V-flat. The light off of that went through a 4x4 of light grid. So that was our book light setup. And if you want to take a look at that, you can see that here. Behind the diffusion here is the light hitting into the V-flat and then we had a 4x of light grid and then another 4x of light grid underneath it. Looking back, I probably could have put this in a horizontal configuration, but we liked the look of it, so we went with it. Another thing I could have done and gotten away with was not doing a book light and just moving the HMI back so that it filled more of the V-flat, but we liked the way it looked, so you gotta stick to the schedule. So aside from the book light, what we wanted to do was take advantage of all the nice white walls, kind of make it a very bright promo. The only problem is that on this side of the wall, on the left side here, all along that wall were windows. There was a middle window here that I kind of basically covered in 216 diffusion, and that softened the ambient light coming in. And then through this back window here, it was sunlight coming in, and it's hitting the edge of the couch here, the hot spots here, all along the pillow here. What that's doing is giving us a nice stream of light and it's also along the floor you can't really see it but it shows up in some shots now usually you kind of don't want to depend on the Sun you want to light this yourself but we didn't really have that option because we knew that the sunlight would be coming in the windows so we just went with it and used what was available to us sometimes that's what you have to do if this was a hundred percent studio configuration where it was a set then what we would have done was bounced some powerful lights to create this ambient that's going through the 216 or we would have blasted it directly into the the 216 and had that kind of come in as ambient. 216 is very thick, so it kind of could be ambient. Probably what the better thing would be to do is to bounce that light to make it this very large ambient source coming in through the windows. And then of course the sunlight would have just been a direct HMI, probably flagged off so that you can get this nice thin strip of strong sunlight coming in to kind of remove some of the flatness of this type of lighting style. And that HMI probably would be spotted in too. So let's talk a little bit about color correcting something like this. I'm going to show you what the raw footage looks like. This is the raw footage. So it doesn't have that poppiness in the skin tones. That's where color correction comes in and you can kind of refine it a bit. You can see here that nothing really is clipping. If you put this too far down on the waveform here, it's going to be too dark. And then when you want to expand it out, you have to kind of increase the exposure in post-production and you're going to introduce noise into the image. I opted to kind of shoot it where I wanted it and protect the highlights a little bit and keep the skin tones at a level where they wouldn't be noisy and still have a lot of color information, but I didn't want to overdo it and keep everything all the way up here. A little bit of technical data, this was shot on the Ursa Mini Pro. 1600 ISO, 5200 Kelvin, the compression is Q5. So here's my basic setup. I just create a power grade for that. And what this is, is a setup of converting the Blackmagic color space to uh, Rec. 709 and then using a linear gamma keeping the ISO at 1600 and checking highlight recovery if we need it. I do a color space transform from Rec. 709 linear gamma to Arri Alexa Arri Log C. Then I have the Arri Alexa LUT, which kind of just brings you into like a Rec. 709 color space. It's just a better starting point for me and I feel like I have more control. It's very close, but there are some subtleties that I like with this setup. After the Arri Alexa LUT, I open up the shadows a little bit with this curve adjustment because the Alexa LUT really crushes down the shadows. I'm going to bring the blacks down to zero. I'm going to now adjust my midpoint a little bit. I'm just going to bring the midtones up just a little bit. I think this image needs a little bit of contrast, so I'm just going to use the contrast controls and bump that up just a little bit. I think we're pretty good there. Um, here I have a color boost. So what that's doing is increasing the saturation on some of the channels that don't have as much saturation. Boost the saturation just a little bit. I think that's a pretty nice image here. 
Now when you're adjusting contrast, you really want to be careful that you don't go too far because when you do, it blows out the skin a little bit. The blacks are a little crushed. You can see it back here. So, you know, if you go too far, it starts to look blown out and cheap. And if you go too far in the other direction, it just looks like a camera that couldn't handle the dynamic range. So you don't want to go too far here. So I'm just going to kind of bring it back to where I think it looks pretty good. When you adjust the pivot, you want to watch out too because you don't want to push it too far down. And I think that that actually looks pretty good because, you know, we're getting some color back in and that's looking pretty good. Another way to do skin tone refinement here is just to sample the skin tone and then to tighten it up a little bit. What I'm going to do is adjust these settings so that I get a little bit more of the skin tones only. Okay, so we have the skin tone sampled and what I'm going to do is just push the mid tones up and watch, watch the face here as I push the skin tones up. You can see it really starts to glow and maybe I'll push up a little bit on the highlights but I'm just gonna push the midtones up a little bit and you can kind of see the difference here between this and that to take this even further we can blur the skin so we'll just take the blur and we'll increase that slowly and you can kind of see the effect here but you don't want to go too far so maybe I'm gonna say right there. Now keep in mind we already had a diffusion filter in there on set. I think it was uh, Soft Effects 1. So you don't want to go too far with this. Another way to do this is to drop in an effect called Beauty and you can just drop that in. What this does is it maintains some texture in the skin while also smoothing the skin out. So you can see here that this is blurring it, right? But then if you add this back in it actually maintains some of the texture and you can kind of preview each one of these. This last node here is just grain from Film Convert, and I'm just going to turn it off because I don't think we need it for this. And then I'm also going to add a denoiser because we shot at 1600 ISO, and sometimes that can be noisy. And it actually smooths out the skin tone really nice. I don't think you can see it in the screen recording, but if I toggle it on and off, you can barely see a difference. But it does get rid of the noise and also smooth out some of the skin texture. So I'm pretty happy with that. You can always go back in and just adjust the grade if you feel that there's too much contrast. You can just adjust it to your liking. And that's how we achieved this specific look. Of course, there are multiple ways to do things, so experiment and figure out what works best for you. Big shout out to Elizabeth Mafis for having me on this project. All right, thank you for watching this lighting breakdown. If you like this video, please subscribe and share it if you think it can help someone that you know. Thanks for watching. This this is Paul Del Vecchio, and I'll catch you next time.